Yeah, you know, Brie, actually, um, seriously, just think about it. I mean, I'm all I'm asking is that you just think about it, okay? Just consider the fact that nobody else except for me and you know how fun it is to replace the word you with the word schmoo. <laughs> I couldn't keep a straight face, so I'm going to have to do it again. Bree, listen here. All right. Bree, if you happen... Uh, Bree, listen, if you happen to watch... Hold on a second. I'm nervous. Bree, if you happen to watch this video, the lighting in here is a little... It was candlelight. Bree loves candlelight. Ask me how I know. Bree, if you happen to watch this video, okay? Look, there's Doge. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, my God. That was rude. Was it, though? Excuse me. <coughs> Bree, if you happen to watch one of these videos, or this one, I mean, this one, what was it? It was like, uh, what was I talking about? Bree, if you happen to... Oh, yeah, okay. Bree, listen here, Bree. Listen here, Bree, and listen up good, okay? And when I'm saying Bree, I'm saying B-R-I-E, just so everyone knows, except for Bree. <laughs> so listen, Bree, if you happen to see this video, just know I want you to consider the fact that nobody else in your life, I reckon has any idea how fun it is when every single time you hear the word you in a song, you switch it up to schmoo. And I really think that just based on that fact and reality, Bree, that you and I should commence in our romantic uh, doings. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? I mean, come on. I could name a million inside jokes that nobody knows anything about. But I'll stick with schmoo. <laughs> I mean, come on. I got a whole art piece that's built around changing you to schmoo. And I would love for your creativity and attention to detail and humor and good looks and charm and children 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 everybody dancing now bump 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 everybody dancing now bump 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 Children, everybody dance now. Children, eh, David, what is this, David? Oh, this is a portable harmonium. <laughs> so anyways, Bree, if you happen to watch this video on my private YouTube page, private meaning, you know, you got to type in my name and go into my page, my thing, you know, just like going to someone's garage, except you're just doing it. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. I don't really even know why I'm saying what I'm saying or if I'm going to end up posting this or not. You know, right now I'm just checking myself out on this screen. You know what I'm saying? It's fun to say Brie like I've been saying it. You can see the enthusiasm and excitement on my face when I say it. Brie! Oh, yeah, Brie. I mean, if you're there, if you're, are you there? Brie, are you there? Brie, 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 Brie. Are you there? Remember, B R I E. It's the cheese, yeah. Because we doing big pimping, spending cheese. Yo, we be big pimping on B-R-I-E. And we be big pimping down at NYC. So anyways, Bree, if you happen to hear this video or see it or watch it or any of the above or below, I would like you... Oh, remember the funny jokes? Like, the, oh, we get a trillion of them. But remember? Remember? Free! It's free! Free!
Remember? Andy Dick. Remember? Kid Christ. <laughs> if this Christian music, then somebody's going to hell. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, Andy Dick is a comedian who used to have a show on MTV back in the uh, early 2000s. So early that it was, was 2000. <laughs> One, maybe. Anyways, Bree and I really enjoyed the commodity of Andy Dick. And we used to reminisce on it and talk on it and laugh on it and all kinds of stuff, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Bree, remember, remember that time we recorded a... Uh, uh, you know, you know, I won't get into it here. I won't get into it here because I'd rather do that in public than here in a private video. If you know what I'm talking about. So anyways, Brie, how are you doing these days? Anyways, inquiring minds, hearts, and hypothalamuses really would like to know, young lady. Anyways, I saw your picture on the internet the other day and I was like, holy cow. That woman looks exactly like my wife. And then I was like, holy shit, it's because it is my wife. And then someone was like, yo, I thought she was Tom's wife or Harry's wife or daughter. Or, you know, like some kind of mix of that. And I was like, no, nah, actually, it, she's just my wife. She's my wife. Because there's a thing they say at weddings, you know, what God has brought together, let no man take apart. And basically what that is, is that's angelic voice. God's voice, if you want to say that. The voice of Christ, the voice of truth, the voice of the light. It's letting humanity know. If you fuck with a love and a marriage and a union that is ordained by God and you try to block it and break it and twist it and hold it down and keep it from fruiting... <laughs> You will lose. You will lose because the marriage of Ryan and Bree was a real thing. I was there. I got the t-shirt said Ryan and Bree got married and all I got was this fucking hilarious t-shirt. So Tom doesn't have that. Tom doesn't have shit. He did. Did, did you have a use pastor Rick skit at your wedding with Tom? I highly, highly doubt that, Brie. But with at your wedding recital or reception with me, you got that. You got comedy. You got grade A motherfucking comedy at your wedding with me. Now, as I say that, I'm like, you might not have thought at the time that it was grade A. You might have actually kind of not liked it at all. But let me tell you something. You were wrong. Actually, it turns out, Brie, you were wrong about everything. You were wrong about everything. Except for the fact that that ice cream at our wedding reception did not melt. The whole night. Well, how is that? I mean, that was a miracle that we never really told everybody else about. And I think that's where things went wrong for us. And I want to try again. I want to try again now that I'm, uh, you know... Shaped up, you know, shaped up, shaped up. Yeah. It's all that pain, all the pain. And I did really good at meditating and fighting and fucking and getting really peaceful and cool and loving. And I thank you for your help every step of the way, because I know I couldn't have done it without you. What else does... You know, Tom doesn't know shit about, uh, what? 777 life? He doesn't know about the potential and possibility that we all knew was happening and was there. And then got moved to Boulder so that we could, you know, do what we needed to do and so that I could do what I needed to do. And here I am in the house that you picked for our family in Boulder, holding on the fort, chilling out. I know I invited you here years ago, and you didn't really like that. In fact, I think you got me in trouble for that. And then in the same video then, I made a... Uh, I did a song for you, Bellyache, remember that one? And then when I saw you at Dr. Kopitz last, or, you know, whoever that was that I saw at Dr. Kopitz, 
that said, and you're sending me love songs. <laughs> Anyone watching this video? I had sent Bree in a text message, you know, I'm not supposed to talk about anything except for pickups and drop off for the kids. So God forbid Ryan sends a, him doing a video of a song that he wrote for her or, you know, that, no, 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 he didn't. I don't like that. He wrote for her. It's true. But she, her, the love, their love inspired this song. No doubt. So Ryan, you know, mid-divorce stuff, like he, like Ryan's a lover. Ryan's a passionate lover. You can say whatever you want about Ryan, but you can't say that he's not a passionate lover. In fact, you can say whatever you want about Ryan. Don't say shit about Ryan, okay? You just shut up. You've been saying shit about Ryan forever, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Pew, 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 pew. What was I saying? I know. Bree, tell me what the... You're here, right, Bree? What did I... What was I talking about? I'm listening for you. I'm listening for your response. <laughs> I'm kidding. I am kidding. Absolutely nothing. I did have an image. Oh, it almost came to me. I did have an image of Sean. And his friend... Johanna, who you very well know. Anyone else watching this video that's not Brie, just know this one compared to other ones I've done is really about Brie, B-R-I-E, okay? And I am a paid actor artist that is in the middle of a living, breathing piece. And when I say paid, it's really a joke because it's the opposite. Because when you get paid in blowjobs, it's not really a thing, okay? It's just a joking way of saying like, I'm a playboy, Bree knows. Yeah, see, Bree, does Tom get freaking lint in his belly button every single time? Like, like that? <sighs> I fucking doubt it. I fucking doubt it. I hardcore doubt it. I mean, seriously. Tom doesn't know shit about uh, poop poopy doop. He doesn't know shit about... Um, Oh, you know, it's like I was just kind of opening up to the past, what other things might come in, and all I could see was the future. And so, yeah, that sounds cool. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, yeah. You know, I really think that uh, I'm the perfect guy for you, Bree. You know, I think your dad has done a great job playing his role. I think Tom's done a great job playing his role. I think Brad has done a, you know, like you know, pretty good, a pretty good job at playing his role. Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. And I think you, Bree, have been the best because every time I saw you in court, I was like, wow, that is one hot tamale. I kind of hate her right now, but I actually don't. <laughs> I actually love her every step of the way, even when we're locked horns in the courtroom because it's like, you know what? I don't know what's going on and which end is moving, which things are going, but I'm in my center and I'm patient and I will allow everything to break off and come off. And I know, oh, here's the thing maybe that's coming through to say, and then I think I might end this, although why do I even project or, you know, I don't know what predict. What was it? Oh. Being double married is like, is challenging, I'm sure, okay? Especially when the second married person that you're married to isn't a God person when anyone who knows Brie knows that her deepest passions, desires, and truth involve a life lived within the living love and light of Jesus Christ. And so someone who that is true for, and I know you wouldn't deny me on that, because 
Yeah, your story eight. You know, ever since you were a little girl, I always heard the voice of the Lord calling you. And now here's the voice of the Lord calling you and saying, hello, Bree, it's your dog. Wake up, wake up, I love you. Wake up, I miss you. I mean, I miss Shmoo. I do. I do miss Shmoo. And I miss you. And I miss you, Shmoo. I miss calling you Shmoo. I miss laughing with you. I miss cuddling with you. I miss being married with you. Um, everybody had to do what they had to do. Everybody has done what they've had to do. And there's a higher intelligence definitely working within all of us. There is no doubt. And so when shit's crazy and people don't know which end is up, I never have lost sight of the fact that I love you and that I'm dedicated to you and that I'm always true to you. Which means I care about you. I want what's best for you. I like you. And I've got tons of tender space of compassion with you and the kids' names written all over it. And I just remembered the thing I was talking about before about the song, the bellyache. The song, yeah. Oh, and then I sent the video way back when. So when I saw Brie, yeah, you, Brie, when I saw you at Dr. Copas, and you're like, and then you were walking out in the hall after the session or whatever, and you're like, and then you're sending me love songs. <laughs> and I remember I was just like, I didn't say anything because I just knew that demon that's attacking me for sending love songs behind that in there somewhere is the real Brie that's going like, do it, Rye, send those love songs. Like, I love you. I miss you too. And there's like a bunch of bullshit in the way and I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry, honey. B-R-I-E. <laughs> I think that's what we should do. You should change your name, you know, just for fun, to B-R-I-E. <laughs> Drop everything. Bring the kids. Come to my house. Come with me. Let Tom take whatever he feels like he is owed within whatever kind of exchange you guys have had. And whoever else thinks that you owe him anything or whatever, just, like, let him take whatever... People think that they're like, you don't need nothing, you know, or whatever. I, as I say that, I'm like, I'm not trying to get into your business about that, all that stuff. I'm just saying, like, if you do love me as much as I love you, like, there is an open pathway. And whatever might be holding you back or have you thinking that you're obligated or bound, because I'm telling you, your marriage to Tom is a bunch of bullshit because we got married and we made a commitment and I made a commitment. <laughs> through sickness and in health. And the shit that we've been going through is definitely that. And the love is big enough to have space for it all to go where it's going to go and do what it's going to do. Everyone has learned. Everyone has grown. Everyone has uh, no doubt been enhanced through what's happened and what's gone on in each individual own experience over the last six, seven, eight years specifically is what I'm talking about. Where the kids have gone to school, where you guys live. I don't even know what state you're in. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing except for the fact that everything that I've been saying in this video is pretty awesome and true and real. And when I sent that video with the song in it or whatever, you know, that was what? Like probably now four, years, four or five years ago. I remember at the time knowing like this won't be really received at all. And I know I like kind of get in trouble for sending it because... She's trying to set up this thing where, like, I can't, like, talk or be, like, as a real person. I was like, but all I got to do is be patient because over time, like, that stuff will get through. And she'll remember, like, when he sent the bellyache, you know, like, when she couldn't see me at all, you know. <sighs> yeah. A nice cry, a 
nice cry, nice cry. So anyways. I know it must have been really hard being married with me because it was hard as hell being married with you. <laughs> and as I say that, I can like hear your voice going like, that's like the best thing I've ever heard him say. <laughs> Cause there isn't that like butthurt protective part that's in there that could never ever say something like that and could never ever ever see me or hear me. And it was just a lost cause unwinnable situation and all of that is true and I was experiencing the same thing with you but I never blamed you for it and I went inward started finding myself here in my body and on that fateful night in uh, January of 14 when you me and Sean and his friend Johanna who I mentioned earlier when we were doing one of our weed ceremonies up in the meditation room at 777 that was the fateful night that like the, the the light of Christ really landed here in this body. And I don't know if you remember, but I was like sitting in a chair looking at my hands and you guys were like, Rye, are you there? And I knew that I didn't have to respond at all and that there was enough space and consciousness like anchored in my body that it was like that was the moment that I embodied as a man. And everything that happened after that night, everything that's happened after that night, for me has been completely present and alive and conscious and functioning as a light and pillar and empty vessel for the Lord. Meaning I show up how the Lord shows up in court at Dr. Copas, the psych ward with the kids, with Janet, all of it. And as I say it, I don't doubt that that same thing could be true for you. And if you feel like that's true for you, then I don't disagree. Because every step of the way, I've kind of felt like, I think she is fighting for our family, even though we all seem like we're like fighting in different directions and stuff. We want to get free. That was our whole thing, right? Freedom culture and conversations with God and like getting free. Fastest path to enlightenment. Do what you want, right? Well, I'm here in enlightenment. I did it. I could describe the whole progression. I can describe when it started. I can describe all of it in a way that no one would even like wrinkle an eyebrow about whether it's legit or not. And that's a huge ass statement that I'm happy to be able to make with so much calm, cool, and confidence. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know where you're at in your enlightenment journey, but you definitely taught me lots of shit and you gurued the fuck out of me. In many, many, many ways, and there's lots of great stories to tell about that. Because holy shit, spiritual awakening ain't no joke, bro. Although, it is pretty funny. Yeah, so. Bellyache. <laughs> ah. I'd love to play it for, for you sometime. And sing it, too. Yeah. All right, B-R-I-E. So as I just listen into the quiet before maybe I hang up, it's like I can um, I don't know Tom, of course. You know, he kind of wanted to act like he knew me there when we saw you guys at the hospital that time. But uh, everybody in the mix knows that, like, he doesn't know me at all. He doesn't know the details. He doesn't know anything about what's going on from this end. And that is someone who would never be able to look me in the eye in a neutral room, in a neutral place, without realizing that he fucked up because... Marrying someone who's obviously not over the person that she was married to is just trying to slap a Band-Aid on something. And as I say that, I do not dismiss it as uh, less than okay. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. But from a man to that guy, Tom, it's kind of like, yeah, you kind of like uh, got involved with a woman who you don't really know, like... Like, you don't know me, and that's not very gentlemanly to get involved the way that you did without knowing me. I mean, I, oh, hey, look at this lady that I met on Tinder. She's got two great kids, and she's got other stuff that could be cool, and 
she's awesome and charming and handsome, and beautiful and amazing. Like, wow, let's get married. Wow, yeah, let's jump right back into something that we both already had a failure at. In an attempt to try to cover up what we're not able to look at in ourselves. That's how it looks from my end. And I'm not talking about this end. Is that funny? All right. I have a tuna melt sandwich that I would like to eat now, listen to some music, and kind of just sit in the afterglow of everything that's been said here. And actually, you know what? This is just coming to me now. I wanna, I'm going to do a little song. I'm going to do a little love song, like, sending me love songs. And you're sending me love songs. That's right, I'm sending you love songs. Because that's what you do when you love someone. You send them songs and shit. And you say, I love you no matter what. You can hate me. Hate me, hate me, hate me, hate me, hate me, hate me. And when you're done with all the hate, I'm right here going like, want to hang out? I hear you. I want to hang out. Because, like, you know. I actually really think you love me a lot. So much so that you were willing to do everything that you did for me and our family. It just maybe you just didn't know it. Till now. <laughs> and maybe not. Maybe none of this is true or real. I really don't know. I really don't know. But love's gonna love. And love is desire. You know, I used to talk all this talk back in the day. Love, desire, do what you want. Follow your heart, all that bullshit. You know, not bullshit, but um, so I'm just saying, like, yo, I'm living it. I always been living it. And a lover's gonna love, artist is gonna art. Put me in jail, put me in psych ward, do whatever, do whatever, do whatever, do whatever. And like, I could not stop loving Brie for one second. How would it be possible to not love Brie? Beautiful, smart. And no, and no one even really even knows yet the magnitude. I know it. I do. She knows that I know. Just hasn't been fully unearthed and revealed yet as far as I know. And it's been a while. So this is one of them love songs, okay? This is Belly Eight. <clears throat> it goes a little something like this. Yeah, don't expect much, okay? Yeah. D -d -d don't you say a word. Please don't even speak. Cause this could take a year or two. I don't know what to say, but you have got your way making me confuse yeah you do
and find a way But have you seen it my way? because he's on Instagram and Facebook too, I think. But anyways, that's for another day and another video. <laughs> All right, I love you. Um, and yeah, you know, it's all good in the hood, you know. Thank you. Peace. Blessings to anyone else that might watch this shit, okay? Anyone else that might watch this shit, just know. Lucky son of a bitch. I am. Because I got to be married with Bree for 12 years.